Bernadine's television family, we gather once again uh, around the warmth of our high definition televisions to bring you high definition television. It is Wake Up in Anchee Valley. It is Tuesday, the 13th day of September 2022. I am Dan Koontz. Here we go. Blocky. Look. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's better than it was yesterday. I mean, this morning I could actually see the cross. Uh, that wasn't the case yesterday when our air was pretty much unfit to breathe. It ain't good right now. It's 115 on the scale. That's unhealthy for sensitive groups. Other areas uh, have worse air than we do. There is some relief in sight. Going to get a little bit of rain. Wind will be picking up a little bit this afternoon into tomorrow. We could use that to scour out the skies, but we still have the air quality alert. Uh, that continues until 1 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. And uh, we got some slow-moving thunderstorms that could bring some rain to the foothills of the Cascades and to the north of us. Hopefully, the thunderstorms will have a lot of rain with it. That would be nice. We don't want lightning and no rain. And Stevens Pass, by the way, is still closed because of the Bolt Creek fire. Uh, it's still not open yet, so can't get through on US-2, which has put a lot of stress, by the way, on I-90, as you might imagine, since one of the main east-west corridors in the state is not open. Everybody has to go to I-90, and it's uh, traffic is pretty slow and pretty heavy there, too. It is what it is. It's so strange to... Stevens Pass is closed. Well, we, that, we could say that in February because of snow and avalanche control work, but not usually not in September. Oh, well. It is uh, 55 degrees. It is cloudy. It is cool. It's hazy. Let's go. Let's see what we have out there with our cameras around the valley. Yeah. Uh, that is that. Is that jump off ridge? Oh, that's the lower cross camera. We have two cameras up uh, on the uh, Wenatchee Heights. Of course, as you know by now, our main cross camera uh, it gave its life so we could bring you quality television. It died. So we have to bring a new one in. In the meantime, we still have that one, and that gives you a pretty good idea of how blucky it is. That's pretty close to the valley, uh, and it's still not good at all. Again, 115, the last I checked, on the scale, unhealthy for sensitive groups, but it's better than it was yesterday at this time, and it was about twice that bad. Camera number two. Whatever we can see from the Arondo Rock camera, it uh, looks like we have that pointed to the north, up the Columbia River, that's Lake Antiat there, or the Columbia River, whichever you Prefer. I guess when you flood the town of Antiat because of Rocky Ridge Dam, you're going to call the body of water behind the dam after the town that you wiped off. <laughs> Makes sense to me, I guess. Good morning to our friends up in the Arundo area, camera three. Uh, again, we're kind of limited on the kind of cameras we can use. That's, uh, I should know this. Um, is that, I don't know, Manson? Yeah, that's the Manson Water Tower. Thank you very much. Uriah. I don't know what direction he has uh, pointed at. Uh, there are a couple water towers pretty close to each other, and both of those towers actually have SkyFi dishes on them. That's how the system works. The higher up they are, the better off you are. So things are pretty lousy up there right now in Chelan. Your air quality is 111. That's also unhealthy for sensitive groups. And camera number four. Rock Island checks in. That doesn't look too bad from there. You can see the golf course clear as day. That's not, but you can't see Malaga or the old Alcoa works. It's, that's all gone. You can't see the end of the East Wenatchee bench either, but you can see a little bit of Rock Island uh, from our Rock Island camera. That's up there a long, long way. As I mentioned before, there is a slow moving weather system that's going to bring some showers and thunderstorms. Uh, they, there was a, a flood watch, but now they've taken that off. They don't think it's going to really affect the Wenatchee Valley. But to the north of us and to the west of us, where the fires are, you can see some rain. Uh, there's a big low pressure ridge. It's sitting just off the Pacific coast. It's spinning counterclockwise. That's what they do. It's grabbing moisture off the Pacific uh, Ocean and it's bringing it up our way from the south. And uh, we could use it. <clears throat> Thank you very much. We Well, what we really need is a lot of rain. Thunderstorms also means lightning. So and it's also been unseasonably cool because the sun has not been able to pierce the atmosphere with all this thick smoke. We were thinking we were going to be in the lower 80s yesterday. We only got to 70. We were happy to get to that. And by the way, uh, up at Pangborn Memorial Airport, this is where they measure these things because you have to measure them somewhere, we got 0.02 inches of rain uh, at Pangborn yesterday, and that, believe it or not, tied the record for rainfall for September 12th. Even though it was almost unmeasurable, it was enough to do that anyway. Okay, air quality. Again, this is about a half an hour ago when I grabbed this. As you can see, uh, the bad air has uh, began to drift to the south and the east. 
Uh, the Puget Sound area is all but scoured out now. But again, in Wenatchee, 115, unhealthy for sensitive groups. Leavenworth is 174. They had extremely bad air all day yesterday. Uh, 174 is unhealthy. Cashmere, 160, that's unhealthy air. Moses Lake, 152, that's unhealthy air. Chelan, as I mentioned, 111, unhealthy for sensitive groups. But it looks like we're going to get through this. The air quality alert will expire at 1 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. And we hope that that is, in fact, the case so we can go back to, you know, going outside. And uh, it's cool. It feels kind of, it's starting to feel a little autumnal. Uh, and I'm all for that. From the National Weather Service, 77, our high today, our normal high, 78. So right around there. And again, we didn't even get close to what we were expecting yesterday because of the uh, cloud cover and the smoke. 57 for the overnight low tonight. Sunny but hazy still. Wednesday by Wednesday afternoon, if everything pans out, and we're going to get a little bit of wind tonight into Wednesday as a, a cold upper level low begins to move in. That should get the job done. We should be fine by the time we get to Thursday, up to 79. Friday, very nice, 78 for the afternoon high. Look how chilly it's getting at night now, into the 40s for the overnight low, Friday night and Saturday night, and probably Sunday as well. But we are going to cool off quite a bit, and it's going to start feeling like fall. I think we're going to start seeing some significant changes to the uh, foliage out there, the trees. I think they're going to start losing their leaves and changing their colors. And by the way, we continue to lose about four minutes of daylight a day. Sunrise this morning was at 636, sunset tonight, 717, 12 hours and 41 minutes of daylight. The autumnal equinox is one week from Thursday, by the way. All right, that's your forecast. We got that business out of the way. Next up on the agenda, news. We'll have that for you when we come back. You're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley on the NCW Life Channel. This could be the view out of your office window. North Central Washington is probably one of the most beautiful places to live and you get the experience at all as a transit operator. Link Transit coach operators enjoy full family benefits, paid CDL training, a state-of-the-art fleet, and the satisfaction of being part of a progressive, community-minded team. We have a lot of fun with each other. I mean, it's a good group of people. We're all kind of like a family. If you like this view, Link has a seat for you. The next operator training starts soon. Apply today at linktransit.com. Right now, it costs a hundred bucks to fill this up and a thousand bucks to fill this up. We're all feeling it. Families and businesses getting squeezed because of broken supply chains and corporate greed. I'm Congresswoman Kim Schreier and I'm leading the fight to suspend the federal gas tax to get prices down. I'm holding Big Oil accountable so they stop ripping us off. I approve this message and I'll keep fighting to bring down gas prices for you. It's cloudy, it's smoky, it's hazy, it's 56 degrees, some light rain in the Wenatchee Valley, perhaps some heavier rain in the Leavenworth area, and they could use it uh, up in the Lake Wenatchee area as well, and the uh, temperature is a little on the cool side, and the air still isn't very good. Eight minutes after the hour, speaking of wildfires, a third wildfire has been added to the list in the Lake Wenatchee area. It's the Minnow Ridge Fire. It was first reported just about 3 o'clock on Friday afternoon. It's burned about 350 acres. It's uh, just a few miles from the Irving Peak Fire. That's burned about 3,200 acres. And the White River Fire, that's burned about 2,500 acres. All three of those fires, of course, burning in heavy, dense timber. Uh, those fires, the Irving Peak and uh, White River Fire, they've been burning for over a month now. The U.S. Forest Service said the cause of the Minnow Ridge Fire, they don't know. All three fires are in areas that are difficult for firefighters to access, so it's probably just going to burn until Mother Nature puts it out with rain and snow. Speaking of fires, Okanagan County firefighters had to deal with a whole bunch of haystacks that caught on fire. Uh, this happened on Saturday morning, about seven hours of firefighting efforts there. Okanagan County Fire District 6 said they responded about 5.15 in the morning on Saturday to a haystack fire in the Balky Hill area. That's northeast of Twist. They found several haystacks fully involved with a larger stack about 80 feet away. The fire spread into the brush, but it was kept in check until more crews arrived. The fire district said the haystacks had to be torn completely apart to find the hot spots inside of them. Firefighters from Twisp, Winthrop, Carlton, Mazama, the State Department of Natural Resources, and U.S. Forest Service, they all responded to that. The second of the two teenagers who broke into a Malaga gunsmith shop 
and made off with $20,000 worth of firearms as pled guilty. Dobranchi's 16-year-old faces a total of 13 months in state and local detention. He pled Thursday to first-degree burglary and seven counts of firearm theft. Police said the two youths used a shotgun to shoot the locks off the door of the gun shop last April. Then they smashed display cases and seized an estimated 24 handguns and long guns. Some of those weapons were then distributed to alleged youth gang members in East Wenatchee and used to commit a robbery. The 16-year-old will be sentenced, by the way, two weeks from now. The other youth at 14 years old was sentenced to 14 weeks old was sentenced 14 years old was sentenced to 36 weeks for his guilty plea. That happened back in June. City of Wenatchee and the Chelan PUD, uh, well, they want your input uh, for some planned improvements to Riverfront Park. The design of the first phase is underway. It possibly includes a splash pad, a playground, a picnic pavilion, trail improvements. The city and the PUD will hold public meetings today and tomorrow at the Pibus Public Market Boardroom. They're going to show off their designs and take input from you folks. Those meetings take place from 4 to 7 this afternoon and then tomorrow morning from 7 to 10. Two informational booths will also be set up at the park itself in the Apple Capital Loop Trail area. Confluence Health has new facilities for patients coming out of surgery at Central Washington Hospital. The post-anesthesia care unit or recovery area it's doubled its bed space after a major remodel that was just completed at the end of last month. 20 recovery beds are now available to support 12 operating rooms. Patients emerging from surgical procedures remain under the care in that room until they fully recover from being under anesthesia. Confluence administrators say the rooms at the PAC can also at the PACU can also be utilized as a surgical space for some minor procedures that don't require a full operating theater. And good news for anglers, and perhaps good news for the environment. Uh, sockeye salmon returning this season in record numbers to the Upper Columbia Tributaries at a Chelan County PUD board meeting last week. PUD fish managers said adult sockeye counts passing Rocky Reach Dam are the best they've been in 30 years, perhaps due to the cooler ocean conditions and better food availability last year. Every spring we forecast what we think are going to be the adult returns. And so this past spring, the uh, forecast for sockeye was around 200,000 adults. Well, we ended up getting about 640,000 adults back to Bonneville. And the reason probably for the uh, forecast being so far off is probably due to ocean conditions. We use regression analysis to predict what we think the returns are going to be. And a lot of the predictor variables have included years of poor ocean conditions. So it's, uh, it's great news for uh, adult returns. And so this is just Okanagan, sockeye that are headed up to the Okanagan. And as you can see, uh, it was a lot, uh, a lot of fish this year. <laughs> and so this year at Rocky Reach, uh, our fish counters, they counted a lot of fish. I mean, it wasn't just sockeye, but it was over a million fish. And... Uh, 530,000 sockeye alone, which is a record year since the last 30 years I put on this graph. And for Okanagan sockeye, you can see how the one year it's high returns, the next year it's low returns, high returns, low returns. And that one of the hypotheses is that um, they are so responsive to environmental conditions. So for example, in 2014, we had a big return but not very many of the adults were able to spawn because that was a year when we had really warm river conditions and a lot of them died before they were able to spawn. And you can see that uh, as a reflection in the 2017 return. So we also have uh, rain on snow events that scour out reds that have been um, already uh, made in the river. Uh, hopefully folks were able to partake in the Lake Wenatchee fishery this year. It was also a record year with 110,000 sockeye at Tumwater Dam, which is amazing. We had another good return year in 2014, but again, that was a really warm year. All of a sudden I want lemon juice and tartar sauce. And those are your headlines at quarter after the hour. We'll have a newscast for you, of course, as we always do. Holidays accepted, of course. At 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 10 o'clock tonight with a preview of tonight's news, the anchor Grant Olson. 
Good morning, Dan. Coming up tonight on the NCW Life Evening News, we will bring you the latest real estate snapshot from Pacific Appraisal Associates, where once again, home prices are way up compared to last year. Lots of haze again today and a chance for showers. I'll have all the details in your complete North Central Washington weather forecast. And then in sports, Eric Granstrom will have results and reaction to last night's Seahawks Broncos game and the return of Russell Wilson. That and all the day's news stories coming your way tonight at 5, 6, and 10 on the NCW Life Evening News. We hope to see you then. Dan? Thanks, Grant. And don't forget, if you want to reach out and say hello, we try to make it as easy as possible. The tools in the toolbox at the bottom of your screen. Basically, if you have access to the Internet, you're in business. All right. Going to take a break. When we come back, apparently there was a big football game in Seattle last night, I'm told about. We have that. When we get to sports, also the obscure holiday today in history, some celebrity birthdays, an opinion from Mike Mad Dog Mignotti and Linda Hagland, the uh, executive director of the Wenatchee Downtown Association, will be here live in Studio 3 to have an important little conversation with somebody, well, me. All coming up. You're watching Wake Up Wenatchee Valley on the NCW Live channel. FX has moved their shop to a larger location to expand their services, including adding in a state-of-the-art large format printer. They got it. You need banners? They got them. You need vinyl decals for your cars, trucks, vans, or trailers in just about any size? Yeah, they got it. Color FX has also been providing fun swag and clothing for local churches and high schools around our valley for decades. Support your local print shop. Call Color FX in Kashmir today. Hi folks, welcome to Save Mart. How can we help you today? Uh, we're looking for a recliner. Okay, right this way. Go ahead and move this chase on the other side. Great, I want that one. I would like that one. That's a great choice. And I want this one as well. Okay. And I definitely want this one. Ooh. You find it at Save Mart. Full service at a low, low price. Seventeen minutes after the hour. All right, it's just the first game. There's still sixteen more games to go, but who's kidding who? Hey, it was fun. Seahawks uh, beat Denver last night, seventeen to sixteen, with the return of Russell Wilson. Denver had the ball in the closing seconds, or rather than have Wilson go for it on fourth and five, the Broncos attempted a sixty-four yard field goal to take the lead. Didn't make it. Geno Smith looked really good, especially in the first half. Led Seattle to 17 points with a couple of touchdown passes to his tight ends. Coach, Coach Pete Carroll, needless to say, very happy with Gino's performance. How about Gino? I mean, Gino just, he's 17 for 18 in the first half. I mean, who does that? You know, these guys, guys just don't do that, you know. Um, but remember, he did it against Jacksonville. You know, he had like, I don't know, 12, 13 in a row or something like that. So Gino played tonight like he's been playing the whole time we've been practicing. That's what he's been looking like. He didn't look any different than what, what he's looked like in practice. And so that's why we had the belief in him, and that's why he, he was able to, to win the job and, and uh, go out there on Monday Night Football and win, win a football game. Smith said he knew the whole time that he was capable of doing good work in the NFL. He just needed the chance to prove it. Yeah, I think when people say what I've been through, I think uh, that's a stretch, man. I'm in the NFL for 10 years. So, I mean, to say what I've been through is uh, it's kind of funny. And then to say, you know, people wrote me off. Um, I've just been working. You know, that's what it means by I never wrote back. I don't, I don't listen to stuff like that. I just work. You know, I know what I have inside of me. Uh, God's blessed me with, with talent and also a passion and a drive. And so as far as worrying about naysayers, anything like that, uh, I don't get into that type of stuff. You know, people can write you off, but, you know, life, life's about what you make it. And so uh, I've just been blessed enough to be in the NFL for 10 years and been working my butt off. And it's a team game, and we got to win tonight as a team. Smith hooked up with DK Metcalf seven times for 36 yards. The fourth-year wide receiver, Mr. Metcalf, says he's happy Geno had a good game. Well, I mean, it was it was very, very uh, you know, good to see Geno go out there and do that. But, um, I mean, he's had it in this whole time. He just hasn't had the, you know, perfect opportunity, you know, for him to go out there and showcase, you know, what he really is able to do when, when he's in full control of, of a football team or, or of an offense. So just for him to go out there and get a win like that, I mean, it really just shows the, the confidence that we have in him and, um, you know, what we're looking forward to this whole season. 
Seahawks didn't score in the second half. They didn't need to. They did have a couple of goal line stands, though, that resulted in turnovers. I'm really fired up for the for our defense that they hung in there. We gave up a lot of yards, but uh, it's the, it's the power of believing that you can stop somebody no matter how how much there is left there is so uh, it's it's so enriching for the as we go you know down the rest of this, this season here that we can do stuff like that because you believe it just helps you believe. Strong safety Jamal Adams went down with an injury in the first half. Coach Pete says it's pretty bad. He. Um, he hurt his knee tonight. He um, not a typical uh, knee injury. Um, it, it, his his quadricep tendon, I think, got, it got damaged some tonight. He, he's he got hurt, so it's a serious injury. For Russell Wilson, 340 yards and a touchdown. He was booed pretty heartily throughout the course of the game. Coach Pete Carroll said the Twelves really brought it last night. It was a great night. Fans were ridiculous. The 12s were so good tonight. God dang, they were great. Oh, and I'm so, I'm so pleased that we could give them a game like this and they could have that much fun. And they even, we have to win the game on, on three times with those timeouts. So each time we won the game again, then we won the game again, then we won the game again. It was great. So I, I, wasn't, I wasn't bugged by that at all. Um, but they were incredibly good. And uh, we're so lucky. We're so lucky that we get to play here. And, and, and our fans love it so much. And they, they perform like that on game day. It was awesome. The undefeated Seattle Seahawks. I won't be saying that much longer. They lead their division. They'll be in San Francisco to take on the 40 Winers at 1 o'clock Sunday on Fox. Mariners back in action tonight. They'll be at T-Mobile Park. Seattle welcomes the Padres for the first of a quick two-game series. Hugh Darvish will take the ball for the Padres. Logan Gilbert goes for the Mariners. 640 Route Sports Northwest. Mariners didn't play. The rest of the American League West had games on Monday. Texas played two in Miami. They won the opener, but then they lost the nightcap. Mike Trout hit his 35th home run of the season, but it wasn't enough for the Angels. Lost to the Guardians 5-4. And Framber Valdez pitched a complete game six hit shutout for Houston. Astros beat Detroit. Everybody beats Detroit. The final was 7-0. The two teams Seattle is battling with for the top three wildcard spots play each other yesterday. As you can see, Toronto topped Tampa Bay 3-2. The Mariners and the Jays are now a half game ahead of the Rays in the wild card chase. Lots of high school sports going on. Let's start out with the pitch. Cashmere visits Okanagan at 4.30 this afternoon. Shalem will host Royal. Omax at Liberty Bell. Brewster will host Bridgeport. Manson travels to Lake Roosevelt at 6 o'clock. you got Grandview at Afreda at 7 o'clock. Eastmont at Wenatchee and Moses Lake will host Eisenhower. On the volleyball courts tonight, Moses Lake Christian visits Handy at 6. At 6.30 you got Zilla at Cashmere, Afreda and Quincy. Manson hosts Oroville. Tanaska travels to Bridgeport. Brewster takes on Liberty Bell. Lake Roosevelt is at Okanagan. And Waterville Mansfield will host Pateras at 7 tonight. Wenatchee and Eastmont and Moses Lake travels to Ike. And we will have the Panthers and the Wildcats tonight. On the NCAA Live channel, Eric Grandstrom with the call. And we'll get going uh, about five minutes before 7 o'clock here. It's a busy week for the Eastmont uh, and Wenatchee athletic programs. For that matter, the two teams play each other in almost everything. Soccer and volleyball and, of course, uh, the big football game on Friday night. Eric had a chance to visit with Eastmont AD Russ Waterman. Well, it's a big week for Eastmont and Wenatchee as they start the rivalry. It starts tonight, as a matter of fact, with volleyball. I'm talking with Russ Waterman, the athletic director here for Eastmont High School. First of all, for us, for those fans who've been coming to volleyball in the past, are we going to expect anything different as far as getting into the game here tonight? No, we've kept that all the same. It's a uh, ticket spigot. You can find it if you go to eastmontathletics.com. You can go up to Big Nine Tickets. You'll be able to get on. They go on sale 1201 on game day. Uh, $5 for adults, free for students, and that's the way they get in. We don't do any cash at the gate anymore. It's a safety issue for our staff, and it helps them not having to hold money or make change or somebody bringing in, you know, the ashtray out of the car full of dimes and nickels and pennies. So uh, ticketspicket.com or, again, you go to eastmontathletics.com and pick, click on uh, Big Nine Tickets. Now, you hope that you sell the place out. It's not a usual thing for volleyball, but it's the rivalry. Uh, what's the cap on how many people can come to that uh, match tonight? You know, I think in, in volleyball, we're about uh, 1,800 to 2,000. That's that's every seat being taken. Um, we've, we've been big before, but with soccer going on also, it's kind of a split crowd. So sure. we, there shouldn't be a problem, but I would get your tickets early and get to the gate early. And let's uh, talk about that, too. We've got soccer tonight as well over across the river. Uh, same place to get those tickets? Yeah, same place. And okay. you're going to want to look for uh, Wenatchee on that one. Since uh, the Wenatchee is hosting, it'll be under their ticket spigot site. But if you still go to that site on our, our website, it'll take you to the Big Nine site, and you can pick any tickets up. 
Now, it's early in the season, and we've got a fifth season here in North Central Washington now. you got got fall, winter, spring, summer, and fire season. Yeah. Uh, you'll see that there's nothing happening behind us here, and that's for good reason because of the smoke. What's the situation as we look at soccer for tonight and we look at football for Friday? You know, it, there's been some discrepancy in the state on which metrics to use. Uh, before, we'd already used 150 on the AQI. The Department of Ecology this year came out and moved that uh, bar to 100. Um, and we're supposed to be inside, but it's also up to a little bit on local discretion. So in talking with our local health, health district, they're okay uh, with about up to 120. But uh, what we find here in the valley is it can be really ugly in the morning. About 2.30, the wind comes in, cleans us out, and we're down in the green or, or a low yellow by that day. And I know that uh, Mr. Beeson will be making that determination early on in the day. But I'm hoping that it, it holds out and it gets better and we have that game. We don't like to reschedule because games are fixed and yeah. rest time and recovery is important. I know we are looking forward to it. I know fans are looking forward to the Bridge of Sportsmanship coming up on Friday, 19th particular nomenclature for the game itself. Uh, 55th meeting, I think it is, between the two schools. Now, you have changed things this year specifically in regards to fans and attendance and things like that. Tell us about what they'll find at Wildcat Stadium when they come on Friday night. You know, one of the things we did this year in the summertime is we brought in uh, Jay Hamas. He's a nationally organized guy. He works with the Safe Sports Zone. And I met him through a national conference, and he came in and kind of presented to our staff, worker staff, what to look for with after school events and make things a little bit safer. And he also did a safety audit of our facility. So we had some things that came out of that audit that we needed to adjust to make it a safer experience for our fans, our workers. And so uh, we, we changed some things on the entrance and the egress. You'll see that there'll be, you know, more of a streamlined process for the flow of people. Uh, we'll still do the online ticketing thing. Again, we want you to be able to come in, just show your ticket, have a QR code scan and in you go. Uh, but uh, for that, uh, you know, with who can attend, uh, we have limited, uh, if you're under grade seven, you need to attend with a parent. Uh, we find that sometimes those parents let the kids run around a little bit. That's a safety issue. It's not enjoyable for the fans. Uh, seventh and eighth grade students for, that are for uh, Eastmont, they'll pay a student fee. Uh, Wenatchee students will pay the student fee with ASB, uh, and then it's a $5 charge for, for adults. So those things haven't changed at all, and we'll, we'll cap the capacity at about 3,000 to 3,200. Last year we had about 2,600 sold tickets, so I think we're going to be okay there, but being early in the season, good weather, we, we expect a little bit more. Uh, but uh, that'll be a little bit of a change, and then we'll, we'll be moving people around a little bit more to take seats or, or at least get into the, the standing areas so we're not congregating behind the bathrooms and by the concession stands. That's kind of a bottleneck point that we want to move people out of. Ticket Spicket is the place to go to get your ticket starting on Friday for Friday night's game. Uh, again, social media, they have a great presence of, uh, on social media, Eastmont Athletics, Eastmont Wildcats. Just do a search. We'll, of course, keep you up to date on our social media as well in case anything should change between tonight and coming up on Friday. Russ, thank you, and uh, have a good rest of the week. It's going to be a busy week, but what a great <laughs> week. Huh? Go Cats. There you go. Russ Waterman joining us here on Wake Up with Anchee Valley. Thank you very much, Eric. Yeah, Bridges Sportsmanship game. Panthers and the Wildcats will have it for you on Friday night. Uh, we'll take it there about 6.30, kick off at 7 o'clock. And those are just some of the games that people are playing on this Tuesday, the 13th day of September. I could have chosen Positive Thinking Day. I could have chosen National Kids Take Over the Kitchen Day, National Uncle Sam Day, National Ants on a Log Day, but no, today is National Peanut Day. I, for one, love peanuts, especially the big bag of peanuts where you have to crack open the individual shell and pop them in your mouth. Uh, peanuts go back as far as anybody can figure out just a really, really long time. In 1500 BC, the Incans, when somebody died, they would entomb their body with peanuts. So while they made the trip to, you know, their voyage to the afterlife, they could eat something on the way there. Uh, peanuts, uh, they think either Peru or maybe Brazil, the Europeans uh, sailed over the uh, Atlantic and they discovered peanuts, brought them back with them to Europe, spread all over Europe, spread all over Asia. Then of course eventually came to North America by African Americans who pretty much brought the peanuts to us. Peanuts have changed a lot uh, since they became a, a, a regular crop. I mean, there was a, a staple in the Civil War you could carry with you and soldiers had an instant uh, source of protein, but now peanuts are almost entirely mechanized. Machines plant them, machines harvest them, machines uh, pick them, then they process them, and they salt them, 
and they roast them. It's all done by machines now. Humans have very little to do with the growing of peanuts, but of course it's now so a lot cleaner than it used to be. By the way, it takes about 540 peanuts to make one 12 ounce jar of peanut butter. And by law, in this state and in this country, you cannot call it peanut butter unless it has 90% pure peanuts. Heads up on that. Happy National Peanut Day. It's the bottom of the hour today in history. It was the turning point of the War of 1812. Didn't happen until 1814, but the British tried to capture Baltimore and they failed to do it. And uh, Francis Scott Key, while he was watching the battle, wrote a poem called The Defense of Fort McHenry, which was later set to music, which later became our national anthem. A friendly reminder, the music, the music to the Star Spangled Banner is British. And it happened in the War of 1812 when we were fighting the British. Anyway, the inspiration on this date. Uh, they found Special Order 191 on this date, September 13, 1862. Uh, that was Robert E. Lee's battle plan for the battles outside of Frederick, Maryland. They, they found it. They left a couple of days earlier at the campground and uh, Corporal Barton Mitchell found an envelope uh, with a piece of paper in it wrapped around three cigars and in it was Special Order 191 which was basically Robert E. Lee's battle plans. So Barton gave him to a sergeant, John Bloss, and he said, this is important. So the captain gave it to his colonel. His colonel gave it to his brigadier general. His brigadier general gave it to the general himself, George McKellen, who said, I got it now. I can wipe Lee off the map. He didn't. They won the Battle of Antietam, of course, but the bloodiest day in American history, the Battle of Antietam, but he could have actually chased Robert E. Lee's army into oblivion, but he didn't do that and we had three more years of war. Uh, 45 years ago today, the boondoggle that was General Motors who introduced the very first diesel-powered American passenger cars to this country on September 13th, 1977. You can go out and buy the Oldsmobile 98 or the Delta 88 with diesel, only they cut a bunch of corners and the whole thing was a fiasco. First of all, the head bolt design and the, was exactly the same as it was for gasoline engines, so that way you could use the same tools for either one. But diesel engines have about three times as much pressure going through the uh, head bolts than a gasoline engine do, and the head bolts kept busting. And then the d diesel gasoline in the mid-70s wasn't the best. That caused issues. Um, they, just, they didn't install a water separator. That caused issues. And then they didn't teach their mechanics how to fix the cars. That caused issues. Uh, the whole thing was just a fiasco. You never see any of these uh, mid-70s diesel-powered Oldsmobiles on the streets anymore because they s s just stank. They were just terrible. Nice try, GM. And happy 37th birthday to Super Mario Brothers. This was a game changer. You want to play? Here we go. Do do loo here we go. We're going to take off. It's Mario. Of course, we're going to traverse the Mushroom Kingdom. We need to, in the end, rescue Princess Toadstool from Bowser. It helps if you make yourself bigger. We played this for hours when we were kids. It took them three and a half years to develop the game, and they did a number of things that became staples of video games. First of all, music. Nobody really thought music was that important. Not the folks at uh, Super Mario Brothers and the Nintendo Entertainment System. They realized music was as much a part of the entertainment and the fun factor as anything else. Uh, uh, Super Mario Brothers is frequently cited as perhaps the most influential video game of all time. I mean, everybody had it. Everybody played it. Its controls were, were precise. It worked really well. Uh, since it rolled out on this date in 1985, 37 years ago, 58 million copies of Super Mario Brothers have passed the shelves. And you could go out and buy it and plug it into your NES on this day 37 years ago. Today, it's time to do some birthdays. John J. Pershing, he was known as Blackjack Pershing, born in the state in 1860, the only American to be promoted to General of the Armies, which is the highest possible rank for anybody in the Army. It's higher even than five-star general. George Washington was promoted to General of the Armies but he had been dead for about 200 years and they did it. John J. Pershing was still alive. He was, of course, the senior military officer in charge 
of the Americans in World War I, and he made a very smart move because the British and the French said, thanks for coming over, America. We'll just go ahead and incorporate you into our armies. And John Pershing said, nope, we're going to be our own army under my command. We'll coordinate our attacks and our battle plans, but we're not going to go ahead and, you know, become part of your armies. This is the American army, and we were going to be a single unit under his command, which was probably a good idea. Jacqueline Bissett, 78 years old today. Just an excuse to throw a picture up on my television program, and happy 54th birthday to Bernie Williams, the retired great Yankees star who holds the all-time, is the all-time leader in postseason RBIs. 80 RBIs in the postseason is still the best of all time. Bernie Williams is 54 years old today. Going to take a break, gun of the opinion from Mike Mad Dog Minotti, then we'll catch up with Linda Hagland of the Wenatchee Downtown Association. Lots going on there. Linda will join me live in the studio when we come back. You're watching Wake Up Wenatchee Valley on the NCW Live channel. I believe we've been coming to Abby's for 56 years, wasn't it? Yes, yeah. 56 years. Remembering all the events as a family and a community that we spent at Abby's. E excellent and delicious food at an affordable price. We're delighted that we live close enough to be able to be a frequent customer. And we are. And we are. <laughs> In fact, we've got orders to bring home a, a giant pizza when we leave okay. here tonight. <laughs> when Mike leaves town, it's a little scary. You never know who might be outside. But we feel safer inside knowing our home is being monitored by a local company. I can check our alarm from just about anywhere. So when we get home, I know it's safe. Protect your family and save money with a local company. Switch your current security monitoring to Guardian Services from Localtel. Call Guardian Security from Localtel now or visit localtel.net to learn more. Flowers are fighters. That's why the Alzheimer's Association Walk to End Alzheimer's is full of them. Because flowers find a way to break through. Just like we will. Join the fight at alz.org slash walk. Hi, I'm Jim Heinlein, independent agent at Springwater Insurance Group. And at Springwater, we really enjoy being independent because what that means is, is that we become an educator and a teacher for Medicare plans, in fact, all plans. So if you have questions about perhaps changing your coverage, going to a new plan, at Springwater Insurance Group, we can teach you all your choices and we give you the option. Would you like to give us a call, maybe have a Zoom meeting, whatever way works best for you, give us a call at Springwater Insurance Group. Transform your windows with a variety of colors and styles like the Allure Transitional Window Covering by Lafayette Interior Fashions. Hi, this is Darren with Mini Blinds and More. We can install the latest and greatest in technology to open and close your blinds with only a touch of a button. From the largest windows in your home to room darkening shades for the bedroom. From stylish shades for your entertainment room to custom blinds for those hard-to-fit places. We have a solution for all of your window covering needs. We offer a variety of window coverings from Lafayette Interior Fashions. Call us today. We are Mini Blinds and More, your local blind store. We were in Roseburg in the early 80s. Our oldest son, Dan, was a defensive back, a starter on that team. They set, in fact, became Oregon State champions, setting the first undefeated 14-0 season in Oregon's history. And a lot of people were losing jobs. Friends had left the community. It was a hard time. That football team and companies like Abby's kept that place alive and the community spirit alive. That's legendary. Mad Dog McNaughty, and everybody's entitled to my opinion. Now, at home, we rarely watch network TV, but once in a while, like we watch the national news, or in the morning when we're out of town staying at a motel or something, we might watch HDTV or find a station that's playing Law and Order, particularly SVU. Yeah. Uh, but being Netflix and Amazon Prime junkies, network TV drives us crazy. Six minutes of a show in the same amount of time watching commercials? I mean, it's ridiculous. No wonder streaming services are taking over TV entertainment. I mean, 
How many stupid drug commercials or ads for toilet paper can someone stomach when you're trying to enjoy reruns of Leave it to Beaver or a new season of episode of This Is Us? Gosh, this is Mike Mad Dog Magnati, and that's my opinion. Hi, uh, I'm Chuck Dronin, managing member at Epla Dolan Retirement and Assisted Living. It's been a tough year for all of us, but especially for those working and living in senior care facilities. Over the course of these many difficult months, our staff at Epilodon has been vigilant in adhering to federal and state guidelines to protect and assure the safety of our residents and their caregivers. If you're in need of assisted living for a loved one, give us a call at Epilodon. We're here for you. I'm John Divis from Wenatchee Dental Arts, and I like to think myself as a comprehensive dentist. We are an office that treats people comprehensively for their dental problems. We do a lot of general dentistry in a broad sense. We don't send everything out. Uh, things that we have the ability to do in the office, we like to keep in the office and under one roof and keep things as complication-free as possible. You can come to one place and have all their dental needs taken care of. Crystal's Restaurant and Lounge in Leavenworth has a warm environment to enhance your dining experience. Serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week. Crystal's Intimate Lounge is a wonderful place to relax and dine with beautiful views of the mountains. Do you have a special occasion coming up? Call Crystal's to reserve their event space. Whether your event is grand, intimate, or casual, Crystal's provides unforgettable food and superb service. Crystal's Restaurant and Lounge, proud to be serving fabulous food and drinks. Funny thing about time, when you're young, summers seem to last forever. And then, before you know it, you're attending more retirement parties than you are baby showers. This is when you'll appreciate our own homegrown, nonprofit Heritage Heights, working to provide every senior housing option our families might need, right here in the beautiful Lake Chelan Valley. Find out more at heritageheights.org. We are back here on Wake Up in Anchee Valley. I am Dan Koontz, making her very first appearance, by the way, on this program. The executive director of the WDA, Linda Hagland, who a couple of months ago told me, you know, at the end of the year, I'll be stepping down and doing something new, not really retiring. Mm -hmm. And I kept that under my, uh, mm -hmm. my hat because you asked me to, but now it's out there because you told the city council last Thursday. It is. It'll be the end of February. And a lot happens in my world around the first of the year. There's reporting, there's accreditation. So it isn't really fair to dump that all on somebody. So I'll be staying till the end of February. We have an annual dinner toward that time, and that'll be my last um, official duty. And yeah, it's, it's time to um, turn the reins over. Our organization is strong and healthy, and it's time for new vision. And I'm good with that. And you told your board about your decision quite some time ago. Mm, just, I did. Again, it's been kind of on the QT. It is, yeah. Uh, but that gives them lots of time it to does. find your replacement. It does, but you know, like everything else, you don't really get on it till you have to. So it's the have to time getting on it. So we'll open up um, with a job description in November, and they'll start the hiring process. And um, we have a good, strong board, and they'll figure this out. And. I'm really proud of them. The conversation with, because we're connected to a state Main Street program, the conversation with our state coordinator is not replacing me. It's where does this organization want to be in the future? And how do we hire for that, right? To set someone up for success, you don't go, you have to do it like the last one did. You go, okay, what's new? And I'm, I'm really proud of the board for looking at it that way and walking through, where do we want to be? There's a lot happening. So it'll be a fun time for someone to take this A over. person in your position has to deal with landlords and tenants and governmental agencies, uh, a whole raft of different personalities and people. 
What's the number one skill your replacement is going to have to bring to the table when that time comes in February? They have to be a people person. It is so relationship based to what we do with our sponsors, with our you know patrons that come to downtown, like you said, business and property owners. It's relationship based. We we pride ourselves on being the uh, connector, the place people come to to connect dots and help people. So that skill more than anything else. And you can't really have an opinion on anything, right? We have to just be there to be supportive, um, give information as it's needed, and we don't have the luxury of being opinionated. We're just, um, we're a small nonprofit that really cheerleads downtown, and that's everybody in downtown. Yeah, not the, just the ones we like. <laughs> the WDA is basically a two-person organization. It's you it's, and your assistant, yeah, and that's... Yeah. And that's right about it. A couple of years ago, right before COVID hit, you were supposed to, the Wenatchee Downtown Association and the city of Wenatchee was supposed to host the Revitalized Conference, which uh -huh. happens uh, every year. It does. Uh, it's spread amongst the various uh, local downtown uh -huh. associations in our state. It didn't happen. It didn't in happen. In 2020, it didn't happen last year, but it's back. Yeah. So on um, October 19th through the 21st, we'll be hosting Revitalized Washington. So it is a requirement if you're a Main Street. So there's 36 like us in the state of Washington, plus little small communities wanting to be a Main Street, have that accreditation. So they'll be coming here and spread out all throughout the community. There'll be sessions in Pibus, there'll be sessions obviously at the Convention Center. Um, the Cooks have opened up the theaters for us during the day when they're not using it, so there'll be sessions there. People come from all over the state to educate, um, collaborate. It's a fun two and a half days. A lot of people are moving downtown. I mean, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of apartment buildings that are going up near the river on Worthen Street. There continues to be a sizable yeah. boom along the river. Uh, developers aren't going to build hotels, motels, and apartments unless they think there's a market for it. That's got to be good news for your organization. It really is good news, and um, this organization when I took this over over 11 years ago has changed dramatically oh but the change will happen in the next three to five years with everything happening with lineage with the PUD moving out with what Widener is doing there'll be a lot of change what an exciting time like I said for someone to move us into the future now I, I can't wait it really is a thriving downtown and we're really proud of that and and it's always been the showcase of Wenatchee and it remains that and I think that's um, that's kind of a feather in our cap here. I should probably ask you what are you gonna do on March 1st? You're gonna <laughs> sleep in? Uh, oh I never sleep in. You know I'm my mother's daughter. Okay. I'm up way early. <clears throat> it's uh, I just I don't know yet what it looks like. Um, I'll never not do something. I just don't know what that something is. What is it this season in my life? Um, where will, what do I want to do? And I don't know that yet, Dan. I just know really, I'm really for certain that if organizations are going to grow, then um, you need new vision. You need new people, right? And I'm excited for that part, for this organization. Um, this is home. I'll never be far away. But um, I'm looking forward for the future. I really am. Speaking of the future, let's talk about some of the events where we have Linda here. By the way, yeah. making her very first appearance on this television this week. program. First Fridays are back. Now, the, the first Friday in October is late. It's not till like the 7th. That's right. But it's still on. It so is. So a little mm -hmm. refresher on what that is. So there is an ongoing effort called the First Fridays Art Walk. And so we're complementing that with First Fridays Downtown. So you can go on our website. There's a QR code everywhere you can click on and tell you what's happening downtown. There's been music and all kinds of fun stuff happening. And we'll continue that effort throughout the year. Um, so businesses tell us they're going to have this or host this and we post that so first Fridays are ongoing how important is it to have constant events coming and going at the numerica performing arts center and at the Wenatchee convention center I mean that's that's a big one, isn't it it is and as we lose that influx of employees next year from the PUD um, all of these things that happen support the businesses and restaurants in downtown and it's really important that we have a healthy pack that we have a healthy businesses, that we have healthy downtown. Because where do you come, right? Where do you bring people? You walk through our great historic downtown. And that activity with the pack, I'm seeing more later activity, which is something that people have been asking for forever. Um, can we stay open a little later? Can things be happening a little later? And First Fridays is a little later and um, in the evening. And I think we're seeing more and more of that. So that will be on uh, Friday, October uh, 7th, and then on um, Monday, October 31st, some sort of 
holiday kids dress up in costumes and we get them all hopped up on sugar back again well and during covid we had generous donations to help us provide the candy for the businesses because it's a big deal last year was on a sunday omg <laughs> it was yeah, big it was crazy. but we'll be monday from three until five and once again um goodfellow brothers and dave and sandy galatly gave us money and thanks to the plaza super jet i was able to source candy so i sourced a lot of candy so we'll shut the avenue down between second and Arondo with both of those remaining open and the businesses come out and we trick-or-treat the avenue and once again and uh, for the adults out there you might want to circle November 12th on your calendar it's your chance to do a little drinking wine and have a good time holiday open house and wine walk we're back to full steam those tickets will go on sale october 1st up off of our website which is windowntown.org and um, we will um, we place wineries in 14 businesses this year plus we have the three tasting rooms downtown that you'll be able to try those some new wines that maybe you haven't tried so those tickets will go on sale um, we will um, limit the tickets to 500 it's hard to say that we're back to full steam ahead but it is um, from 12 to 5 that day and it's a fun day to kick off the holiday season downtown you had the uh, the possibilities tour a couple of uh, months ago on a fairly warm July day. We did. A um, lot of interest in the old Wenatchee Fire Station, mm -hmm. just kitty quarter from where we're sitting right now. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are interested in that particular piece of property, aren't they? They are. And there's a lot of interest right now because, as you know, the city's putting that historic building, plus across the street, the historic um, police station, up for sale. Um, a lot of interest. Our biggest possibility tour and hottest in, in history, but we got to tour the Wenatchee World. There's lots of space in the old historic Wenatchee World building, and people were just interested in overall what's happening downtown and what's available. It was a hot but very successful tour that ended. We got a sneak peek at the new city hall, which was super fun to have the mayor and Laura um, Gloria at the at the city kind of show it off. And we can't wait for that ribbon cutting to happen sometime. I think in November. I hear it's coming. Yeah, the contractors are getting done. In yeah. fact. I looked the other day, the actual chambers will be hosting their meetings. They're pretty much done with that. I know. So much nicer, yeah. much airier, uh, high ceilings. Uh, yep. Uh, just feels better and really welcoming when you come in. Yeah, it doesn't feel like you're crammed into a closet. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah. um, so the Revitalized con Conference, uh, first Fridays, Trick or Treat in the Ave, Holiday, Open House and Wine Walk. We've got a couple minutes left. What am I forgetting? So there's a job fair we're hosting with the a job fair, yes. Valley fact, Chamber of Commerce. This is the piece of paper I printed yeah, up and forgot that's to That's okay. Look at. So once again, we did two last year. We'll do one. It's on the 20th, which guess what is a week from tomorrow. Um, it will be at Pibus from 10 until 3. We have a little, we have like 40 um, businesses coming that are looking for employees. These are great jobs. So if you're interested at all, we'll be in the Pibus Event Center, and that will be next Wednesday again. This is a joint um, effort between us and the Chamber of Commerce because that's the number one request we're still hearing from our businesses. They aren't staffed up, and we're going into the fourth quarter. So timing, it's a free um, event. You can come and see what's out there. So if you're looking for a job or know someone that is, please spread that word. And then I'm going to make you bring me back to talk about our brand new event that will happen on the 3rd of December. Very fun and family friendly. And we'll be able to, um, I'll be able to tell you about it, but I'm not going to. So you have to bring me back so I can bring you some coffee. The, I, I'm all for that. Yeah. I'm all for that. Again, the job fair is uh, Tuesday, September 20th at the at the local tele event center Excuse at me? the Pivus Public uh, Market. And this is, we talked about this before, this was never an issue before COVID. No. We're through COVID for the most part. Uh, are. Things are, are back to normal, and yet they still can't find warm bodies to uh, to man the till and bring the food and that kind of stuff. It's still These an are issue. great jobs. These are great jobs that are out there and benefited jobs. And it's really an interesting place we're in that this, this amount of jobs are out there and it is a really, um, it's a really interesting time nationwide. It isn't just here. People who um, have pulled themselves because of COVID out of the job market, and they're waiting to come back into the job market. So, um, if you know, again, if you know anyone, spread the word. Um, it is, 
it's a really good opportunity. Some will be hiring on the spot and they'll have applications and taking resumes. So come prepared if you are or if you want to pop in on your lunch hour um, from what you're doing now I might be wanting to do something else. So yes. And the last thing I want to say before you let me go and I'm going to make you bring me back for my first time ever. I just want to say thank you to Local Tell NCW Live. For my organization in my tenure, it has been critical to get the word out and given us a great opportunity. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Such community hearts this business has. And um, I, can't, I can't tell you what it means to nonprofits like myself, so thank you. Anytime, the soon to be outgoing, when actually Downtown Association Executive Director, Linda Hagman, as you mentioned, making her very first appearance this week on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. And you, I will have you on again, I okay. promise you. All right. Because we have something fun to talk about. I yeah, can't wait. Absolutely. I'll even bring the props with me. Yeah, next time. please. Uh, okay. Coffee. That's okay. next time. And coffee. Yep. You're watching Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. We will be right back. Motion e-bikes have rolled out the new line of custom e-bikes. They have three-way adjustable folding e-bikes and full-size mountain e-bikes. Pedal assist and a throttle makes them a perfect fit for any rider. Green Motion e-bikes located in the Mills Brothers building. Hello, television family. Grab your cup of coffee each weekday morning and join me. I'm Dan Koontz, the host of Wake Up on Anchee Valley. It's Wake Up on Anchee Valley. It's everything you need to start your day. We're live and we're local at 7 a.m. every weekday on the NCW Live channel. I'm Brian Thorpe, and I'm proud to say that Global Car Care is growing. We always do the right thing, and because of that, we're busy, and it's time to hire an experienced automotive technician. We spend as much time with our coworkers as we do our own family. I want them to understand they're not a number here. They're a person with a family, and I want them to be part of this family too. Do you want an owner that understands and respects what you do every day? I'm that guy. Our compensation is the best in the area. I want you to have your career with us. At Washington Trust Bank, can't is a four-letter word. I think we should hire more people. Doc, I'm late for a meeting. I'm thinking of starting my own practice. Mm, do it. Too much capital. We need a warehouse. I can't imagine how we do that. We should knock that wall down and expand. Do it. There's always another wall beyond the wall. We believe you can do whatever you set your mind to, and we'll help you get there. Washington Trust Bank. Privately owned. Locally invested. Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa, located on South Wenatchee Ave, has the largest selection of spas and swim spas in town. Stay cool this summer in an artesian swim spa and use it all year long. We enjoy helping families reconnect one spa at a time. Hot tubs are proven to improve sleep and decrease arthritis pain. Our passion is water, so please bring us a water sample, and we will help you diagnose your pool or spa water for free. Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa, your pool and spa experts. It's cloudy, it's hazy, it's smoky, it's 55 degrees here in the big city. The air quality in the hour that uh, this show has been gone has gone down a little bit. It's gotten worse. Uh, an hour ago, the uh, the air quality index, we were at 115 here in the Wenatchee Valley. Now we're at 127. That is unhealthy for sensitive groups. It's, uh, it's still an uh, unhealthy period in both Cashmere and Leavenworth. Leavenworth still leads the way. They're at 177. On the uh, on the scale, uh, but things other places the, the air quality has actually gotten a little bit better, especially to the north of us and to the east of us out in the Columbia Basin. Moses Lake was at 152 an hour ago. Now they're at 115. We like to see that, and what we really like to see is a lot of rain on the fires. Now there is that possibility uh, today and tomorrow. The, the atmosphere is a little unsettled. There's a possibility for some rather lethargic moving thunderstorms to bring some rain. In the fire areas, we like that. We need rain, but not lightning. Hopefully, we'll get the best of that so with some light rain, not heavy rain, so we won't have any flooding. Just a nice, light, continuous rainfall where the fires are 
I'm asking for probably a bit too much. In the meantime, your forecast, uh, oh, about 77 or so, cloudy and hazy and smoky. 57 for the overnight low. Could see a little raindrop here in the Wenatchee Valley, kind of like what we had yesterday. Hopefully by this time Wednesday, we'll start seeing some cleaner air. The air quality alert is due to expire at 1 tomorrow afternoon. We shall see. And that is it for us. Have a great Tuesday. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.